You probably saw these floating around the internet and on social media and assumed that they were some form of joke, but you can actually buy these big red boots that Mischief made. But my question is, are they actually wearable? Are they made out of decent materials? Is it just a hype scam? Has fashion gone too far? And most importantly, what the hell are these things and what are they for? And that's what we're gonna find out by running through a test, cut it in half, see how this boot is built and see if this is just a scam or if it is an actual wearable boot. I love when Everyman Jack sponsors videos because I don't have to go through super obnoxious salesy talking points. I can actually give you some real world information like with their beard line because the beard products kind of are, they're a little bit confusing. So when it comes to beard oil, I don't like putting beard oil on a short beard like this because it is an oil. It I just don't like how oily it makes my face. For me, it's more of conditioning the hair. So when your hair is really short, you don't really need it as much. But when you have a big long beard, it's a lot easier to distribute the oil across the beard to condition it so it doesn't break and your beard doesn't fall apart. And then beard butter is, when I, is what I put on like a shorter beard because I like the way that this conditions my skin underneath. And then I'll take a little brush and I, I just kind of brush my beard when it's this short. I like to get the dead skin off. I like to kind of exfoliate the skin underneath because if I don't, I get lots of zits underneath. And I, there's nothing worse than scratching your beard and like your black shirt's covered in beard flakes. And then in the shower, I like to use a beard and face wash because you can, you can use body wash, a lot of people do. But I, it, for me, especially in Utah, it dries my skin out and it, it makes me feel like I had like way too much Botox. And so this is a lot lighter of a wash and it works really well with the other products. And for the rest of my face, or if I'm being lazy or my beard's really short, I'll throw a beard and face lotion over top of it. If I'm gonna spend any time outside during the day, I'll put the SPF 30 lotion from Everyman Jack on. But if it's just an office day or the back of the shop, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time outside. This is a nice lightweight lotion. So that's how I use them. And for me, I like to have the arsenal at my disposal because sometimes I have a mustache, sometimes I have a beard, sometimes it's short. And so it's a nice product line. So thanks again, Everyman Jack, for sponsoring this video and check them out below. And to really understand the shoe, you have to know and understand the brand behind it because this was released by the really mysterious brand slash art collective Mischief. And even if you've never heard of Mischief, you've probably seen their work or at least are aware of a couple of their projects because from time to time, they get picked up by the mainstream media and pop culture and become really popular. Most notably, the persistence of chaos with the six deadliest malware. They did a collaboration with Mr. Beast. They did the only bags where it was like designer shopping bags. They did the blur money that I happen to have a version of. This is not blurred. This is literally what it looks like. Kind of fun. They did a WD-40 cologne, which I love. And even in the sneaker world, they've had quite a big presence in pop. Most notably in 2021 with the Lil Nas X, X Satan shoe, where they put a drop of human blood in the sole. Nike sued him, it gets this big, huge controversy. 2022, they did the wavy baby with that ridiculously waved sole, which we haven't cut apart. We'll do it if that's something you guys are interested in. But one shoe that we did cut apart was the Jimmy Fallon collaboration, where it was the gob stomper with the multiple layers of leather where you could sand down or wear down to reveal all those different layers. So they've always done really unique collaborations that, that really get a lot of attention because of how far they push it and how big they go. Hence, the big red boot. So what is this boot? Well, the brand is Mischief. The style is the big red boot. They weigh just under four pounds each and they retail for $350 and they're made in China. And just to show you and, and illustrate how big and ridiculous these boots really are, the height of these are 15 inches tall. Compare that to a typical tall boot in the Doc Martens and you can see how ridiculously tall it is. They weigh just under four pounds each and the footprint of this shoe is crazy. It's like 13 inches by seven inches tall. Compare that to a regular Doc Martin sole. Just for context, you can see why these look absolutely ridiculous on everyone's feet and why they became so popular so fast because of how exaggerated they are. And a lot of people don't know the inspiration behind these boots because it's not just big, ridiculous red boots. As far as I understand, it was modeled after Astro Boy's boots. And if you don't know who Astro Boy is, it's the great grandfather of all animation. It's one of the very first, if not the first anime ever created. And this little uh, humanoid child superhero protagonist that went around flying, saved the world, he wore a giant pair of boots that looked just like this. And so as an anime fan, I kind of like that history of it. So now let's go through some of the details and see what this boot is actually made of. Because when I first saw this, I just assume it was just all foam and it was garbage and you could wear it for like one night out if you dared and then they'd be completely destroyed. If we look at the upper, it's actually made out of a TPU shell. 
So if you don't know what TPU is, it's thermal polyurethane. It's a very popular material, especially in blundstones. It's what they make their outsole out of. TPU does have that downfall or that negative side of potentially experiencing hydrolysis where the moisture in the air gets absorbed into the TPU and causes it to crumble and melt and become really sticky and unwearable. It's a pretty rare thing. You have to throw your boots into a closet with humidity for like a few years without touching them to get that to happen. But if you do want to preserve these and make sure they last a long time, the best way to prevent that from happening is moving them and getting that moisture moved out of the TPU. But as for the material use itself, it is a smart material because TPU is a very strong material for its weight and its elasticity and its unique properties of being able to be this malleable. And the really interesting thing about this is this TPU is 70 short A, which is harder than even the Blundstone outsole that's only 65 short A. So it should be a very durable outer shell for this boot. And then once you get a little bit further on the inside, it does have a removable insole. And the crazy thing about this is it's actually a pretty decent insole. So for like a gimmicky joke uh, boot, it has a better insole than half the boots that we review. And when I first saw these, I assumed that it was just a shell and it was just big, lumpy, cavernous cavity on the inside, but it's actually form fit. It's almost as if the inside lining is shaped to a regular boot so that when you do put these on, it's not like your foot swimming around like crazy. They fit like a normal boot. And the lining itself is, you know, nothing special. You can tell it's backed by some foam, but it's just a fabric uh, lining. And then what starts to get interesting is once you remove that insole, you can start to suss out what that midsole material is. And you can see deep down in there, there's little holes and perforations in the foam that makes up the midsole because with this much foam, if it was solid foam all the way through, it would be the heaviest boot ever. They're already four pounds each. And so I'm assuming there's some reliefs in the upper as well, because foam has a unique uh, issue with it, where if, it, if you try to cure and expand a, a huge volume of foam, it doesn't always fill that cavity and around the edges or wherever you started that pour, it doesn't fully expand because of the weight of the foam on top. And so that's part of why I'm assuming that this midsole has all those reliefs along with the weight savings and the extra comfort given because of that extra squish. And the type of foam that this midsole is made out of is an EVA foam. So a decent foam, it's the same type of foam you see in most shoes that have a foam midsole. So from the inside even, it is built to a pretty decent standard, at least for what we see in more casual style boots and sneakers. And then if we look at the outsole, this is where this, this boot starts to, to falter a little bit because this whole outsole is nothing but the EVA foam midsole continued all the way down to the outsole where it's been put into the mold to give it the outsole ridges and the, the little, uh, and the texture to give it the grip of the outsole. But because it's an EVA outsole, it's gonna wear about the same as uh, like a pair of Nike Free Runs or that Converse pair of uh, foam soled shoes that we did forever ago. And if we look at the hardness of the outsole, which should inform how durable it's gonna be, we put the durometer tester on it and it came in at a 45 short A versus the inside foam where you're actually be standing on came in at a 30 short A. If you compare that to two other foam based outsoles that we've seen with the Nike Free Run that came in at a 38 and 20 short A and the converse with the, the foam outsole came in at a little bit harder to 58 short A and a 30 on the inside. So right in the right ballpark to be not the most durable outsole because it is just a foam EVA outsole but it is within the right ballpark. And even after just a little bit of wear, you can see how m fragile this EVA foam is compared to like a rubber outsole or even a TPU outsole, which to me was a little bit surprising because if they use TPU in the upper, why not use it for the outsole? But keep in mind, this is a giant red boot that I don't think is made for wearing. So it seemed like the material choices were smart, but what about the application of them? Just because they're decent materials doesn't mean that these are actually wearable. So we wanted to run it through the gauntlet of tests to see how they hold up, if it's actually a wearable and durable boot. So we put the flame to it and it did just kind of melt and fizzle. So I wouldn't be too stressed about being around fire with these. You maybe don't want to get too close because of how much foam is on there because we burned the foam and the foam is a lot more susceptible to uh, flame. So you don't want to be walking around on any coals or any hot spots on this outsole at least. We did the puncture test because, you know, you're not 
not gonna be around any snakes by any means, but it was a nice data point to give us some information of how durable this TPU upper is going to be. So we put it in the rattlesnake test. It took 42.5 pounds to puncture through. Compare that to a pair of docks at 53, Blundstones at 46. So right in the right ballpark once again. That actually really surprised me with TPU. I didn't realize how durable of an upper that would be. Then we also ran the outsole puncture test. Took 37 pounds, not a great score, but it is just an EVA foam outsole. We did the ball drop test. It bounced up 5.7 inches. We did the bar drop test to simulate more human weight, and that bounced up 5.5 inches, which is a decent score. You know, it's 19 out of the last 26. Uh, not great, but with this much foam, you can see how it might kind of deaden the blow, even if it is really soft underfoot. And maybe one of the most important things is the donning aspect of it. How big of a pain is it to get this boot on and off? You can put them on okay by yourself, but taking them off, you're about to blow out your ACL trying to yank on your foot getting them off, so you do need a little bit of help. So not the most user-friendly design when it comes to putting them on, but there is a certain aspect of fashion where you sometimes have to sacrifice a little bit of the donning to get the look that you want. And then the final thing, each of us wore these around the shop a little bit to see how comfortable they actually were. And the general consensus was they are really comfortable underfoot, but because of how big they are and how weighty they are, you kind of have to lift your feet up a lot when you walk and it is not the most easy walking experience. So the materials are good. The application seems pretty decent. The scores are all right. So, so far this boot is doing a lot better than I expected it to. I thought this was just a full on foam gimmick or just a shell. So now let's cut this thing in half and find see what's inside the big red boots. How do they do this? Is there anything on the inside that's going to tell us if this is just a straight up scam? Is it worth the money? Do they actually try to make this a decent boot or is it just a high fashion clickbait trying to get in the mainstream media project? All right, we got them cut in half, and if you're not subscribed, consider doing it. It's a really easy and free way to support this channel, and it's how we afford to buy these boots and shoes to cut in half to show you if everything is just hype or if there's actually some substance behind it. So I think I have to stand up to, to do this reveal. So let's see what's inside. So this is way more intricate and more engineered than I had anticipated because there's, there's four main parts to this boot. You've got that TPU rubber skin on the outside. You have this really soft foam, almost booty on the inside where you have these fins that are there to create cavities where, where it's gonna prevent exactly what we talked about with having too much foam, it's gonna weigh it down or like certain parts of the foam that don't, don't cure and get really hard and weighty. This allows you to have a little bit of squish and a little bit of lightweightness while still maintaining that structure of the big red boot. And then you have this midsole and outsole layer of EVA foam, which is a little bit harder and a little bit more supportive than this upper foam. And it's two different injection molding processes. It might even be three with this little fin part. And so I just assume it's one solid piece of foam, but it's, it's a lot more intricately designed. And then really the last piece is just the insole and the lining. So this boot ended up being a very impressive engineering marvel for the boot world because of how intricate and how specific you have to be to pull this off in the right way to even make it semi-wearable. So at the end of the day, what is this boot? Is it an exercise in trying to make the weirdest, wackiest wearable boot ever? Is it an experiment of seeing how ridiculous of footwear people will wear given enough hype? 
Is it a commentary on hype culture and the emphasis on perception over intrinsic value? Well, based off of mischievous, mischievous history, I think this boot is all about creating chaos and then just waiting to see what happens. Because I don't think a lot of people will view this wacky pair of anime boots in an artistic way because of how ridiculous they are, because of how over the top they are, but it has all the hallmarks of modern art. They can be seen as a social commentary. They can be seen as art. You can view them through a functional lens. You can view them as a tribute. You can use them as a flex. They can be considered a scam to some degree or a gimmick and it all depends on your perspective. And I think that's the point. And I think Mischief makes these things purposely ambiguous because that's what Mischief does. It seems like they just stir up chaos just to see what happens. And so to me, this boot is functional to some degree. It is built really well, and it is an engineering marvel that a lot of people I don't think could pull off or pull off as well. And at its most fundamental level, I do think this is art at its core. So let me know what you guys think and what you were surprised by and what your interpretation of this is. Am I off? Do you think it's a scam? Do you think it's art? Do you think it's a commentary? Let me know what your guys' interpretation of this is and let me know what other boots or shoes you want us to cut apart because I love doing these big wacky boots. It's so much fun. So thank you guys so much for everything and all the support that you guys give us. It means everything. So thank you. See ya.